So our next session features people who have been told you have limits. You're not going to walk. And there are some smart people out there with that healthy disregard for the impossible who are working with them. So I'd like to introduce our first man who won't accept the impossible. Please welcome Mark Pollock. Mark Pollock was a competitive international rower and a final year student at Trinity College Dublin when he was diagnosed with a detached retina and suddenly lost his sight at the age of 22. But he refused to let the setback destroy his life and he battled on. Over the next 10 years, he chose to take on a host of adventure challenges and test himself around the world, including six marathons in seven days in the Gobi Desert, the North Pole Marathon, and a marathon at Mount Everest. And on the 10th anniversary of his blindness, Mark decided to take on his most epic challenge to date, when he became the first blind man in history to race to the South Pole. Then, disaster struck. While attending the Henley Royal Regatta in 2010, Mark encountered his biggest obstacle yet, when he fell from a third-story window and broke his back, leaving him paralysed from the waist down. This time, the challenge has chosen him. Two years ago, I woke up in intensive care. I had fractured my skull, I had bleeds on my brain, I had broken my ribs, bleeds on my lungs, and I couldn't feel or move anything from my stomach down. I'd broken my back. I'd fallen from the bedroom that I was staying in that night onto the concrete below, and the people who found me thought I was dead. The doctors thought I was going to die. And when I realized what was going on, I wondered whether dying would have been a better outcome. I didn't choose any of it. The accident, the injuries, the consequences, none of it. And I lay in intensive care, pumping morphine into my system to dull the pain hallucinating, slipping between reality and a dream state. And in the moments of clarity, in those first couple of weeks, I was getting messages through Twitter, Facebook, text messages, messages on my blog, or at least my family, my fiance, my friends were reading the messages that were coming to me. And they were saying things like, sorry to hear about your accident, but it's lucky it happened to you. You'll be able to deal with it. Because my story used to be life was good. Then I went blind. Then I went adventure racing to the Gobi Desert, the Himalayas, and eventually racing to the South Pole. I was even doing talks to companies entitled Making It Happen and had a book called Making It Happen. I didn't find it offensive that people thought walking was going to be an option for me. That's the story I'd been selling. And as time went on, I very clearly understood that sometimes we choose challenges and sometimes those challenges find us. What we do next, that's important. And I'm just going to tell you a short story of the last two years. 
very quickly about the people that I have found who are prepared to think differently and the people that I've found who are not scared of being wildly ambitious. In the first six months in hospital, I didn't, I didn't get out of bed. I was operated on, I was sick, I was infected for six months. And as it came to the end of my stay in England in Stoke Mandeville, this first spinal unit in the world, I started to find out that conventional wisdom suggested my injury would leave me paralyzed for the rest of my life. But the hospital I was staying in was set up by a guy called Gutmann, Sir Ludwig Gutmann, who decided 60 years, to stop, 60 years ago to stop spinal cord injury being a terminal illness. He worked out that if you didn't leave spinal cord injured people lying flat on their back, they wouldn't get pressure sores, they wouldn't get infections, and they wouldn't die. 80% of them died within a year. He wasn't prepared to accept the status quo, and he started turning people. He also set up the Paralympic Games. I was in that hospital, but I was also being told that my injury was permanent. And then I started to find out about Christopher Reeve, the actor who played Superman, who was paralyzed from the neck down, couldn't move or feel anything from about here. And he started pushing the boundaries, challenging conventional wisdom, getting involved in aggressive physical therapy. And eventually, after five years, he was able to move an index finger. And he got 70% sensation back in his body, 70% muscle mass back, and 20% movement. Doctors and science had never seen it before. So I got interested in ignoring the doctors and the current science. And I got interested in finding the innovators. And after seven months in hospital, I escaped to California for a month to a place called Project Walk, a company who were commercializing what Christopher Reeve had been doing, making it accessible. And I went for there for a month, got trained up in California, got my South Pole teammate trained up in the techniques, and then we traveled back to a 12-bed ward in Dublin old, archaic stuff. It wasn't exactly Project Walk in California, which was all shiny and new. And the idea with Project Walk was that they didn't care about the science, the best practice, the status quo. They figured that if you got out of your wheelchair and did some exercise, you might have a chance of reconnecting the brain to the paralyzed parts of the body. And just to show you what I was doing out there, we've got a short video, so can we play the Project Walk video? Conventional medical wisdom and science would suggest that I shouldn't be able to move anything below the level of my injury, which is about here. But they don't necessarily buy into that in different parts of the world, and they're challenging convention at all stages. And I've trained now for a year in the Project Walk techniques back here in a place called Standing Start and Prime Physio. And I am starting to reconnect or reopen pathways 
to parts of my body below the level of injury. Gutmann wasn't prepared to accept the status quo, and then the science caught up. Christopher Reeve was pushing the boundaries, and the science is catching up. As I lay in hospital for those first six months, and escaped to California for a month, and then spent another eight months in hospital, I didn't have time for 50 PhDs to tell me that they were right. It just made sense to treat my injury as a sports injury. And it started to work, and I started to get excited about finding people who weren't prepared to go with the standard script. And I went back to California this February. Incidentally, I'd never been in California before this spinal injury. It sounds like I'm spending my whole life in California. <laughs> I went back there this February to Project Walk to get tested to see if I'd made any progress, and I had. And on the way, I called in at a place called Exobionics. And if Project Walk are trying to fix it from the inside out, Exobionics are trying to fix it from the outside in. And I went into their factory in Berkeley, California. And this is what happened. Can we play the video, please? If I sit in my wheelchair for the rest of my life, there is absolutely no chance that I'm going to rise up out of it and walk someday. If I stand up and walk around, there's a chance that my nervous system will reroute. I feel fantastic when I'm up in them. I feel amazing being out of the wheelchair. I've started to feel like I'm walking. At the beginning of my session, I said that sometimes we choose our challenges, and other times challenges choose us. From way before my injury, the South Pole, the blindness, and now with the paralysis, I suggest we respond to those challenges by doing two things, finding people who are prepared to think differently, and finding people who are not scared of being wildly ambitious. And after today's conference, thank you, David, for inviting me, and after listening to all the people on stage and talking to some of you, I have upgraded my ambition from walking again. And if you're going to say you're going to walk again, well, you may as well have the ambition to run again. So that's the new ambition. And the people, apart from you, I plead with you, inventors, creatives, artists, engineers, business people, if you can come on with, up with a solution, I'm on for it. But the people who are the hot property right now for me are Exobionics. And Lynn from Exobionics is going to demonstrate and talk to you about some of the technology which is helping people like me walk in a rehab context. So, Lynn, over to you.